Hello. Good morning. We survived last night, yeah? Let's just march under our breath as we are very resilient. We survived last night. <laughs> okay, so uh, I'm going to talk about uh, the role of IT in shaping business strategy and innovation. And uh, that is my first slide. And before you start asking, what was Ken drinking last night? <laughs> I assure you, I was taking very legit stuff. Uh, very legit, very legit. Are uh, my people here? Deborah, are you here? Eva, are you here? Okay, I'm seeing the Michael. So you can confirm I was taking very legit stuff. But what do you see? What do you see on, on the slide? Nothing? What else? What do you see? I'm hearing people shouting. What, what do you see? Sorry, paint. Some light, some light on the side. What else? A blank screen. I put this thing just deliberately because, and it's just, uh, it's the beginning of my presentation because I wanted to ask myself, when you talk about it being innovative, when you talk about creativity, when you talk about curiosity, what does it exactly mean? Yeah? Curiosity, innovation, being innovative, speaks into thinking beyond what others see. So some people here may see, actually see nothing. Someone else will see something. Someone else will see black pixels. Someone will talk about absence of light. But this trait usually, usually is with the marketing people. Because when they come up and they look at something, they, they, they always imagine what others could not imagine. And I always ask myself, if someone is naturally creative, someone is very curious, does it mean they're innovative or not? If you're a naturally curious person, very creative, if you push boundaries, very resilient, does it mean that you're a good innovator or not? Hmm? It, it usually does, right? Because you see beyond. And it, it's sort of a challenge to us because within the organizations, and even within IT, we should not limit ourselves to just the BAU. It is just to think, what next is there? Yeah? If I come for the CIO conference, why am I here? Is it just to come in and soak in information? Or do we come in for the words? Or do we come in to, uh, you know, it's an excuse to get out of Nairobi because it's raining, only to come here and find it's raining as well? So what, what, what motivates you to come for a conference like this? Is it to pick up ideas so that you can go and implement it? And talking about innovation, if I come in here and I hear something from uh, VMware or something from Safaricom, something they've done, and I go and implement it within the Azure, am I innovative? Yes or no? Yes or no? Yes, I am. Yeah? But should I maybe probably have to take credit and say, I got this idea from Safaricom, but you are innovative. I have three slides today. This was the first one, just the beginning. And then I have three slides for IT, then I have the rest of the slides for marketing. So bear with me. My colleague was here on the first day. She couldn't manage to be until the last day. She requested me to, to have a marketing slide. So I'll have my hat on as IT, then later on as, as, uh, as marketing. So in this slide, let me see. I hope it comes up properly. Yes. Yesterday, we had a very good presentation from VMware, and I picked up a couple of things. I don't know if the VMware team is here. No, I was, just wanted to say that I picked up a few ideas, because when they asked me to come up and uh, present on this, I wasn't entirely ready. I just completed this last, last night, actually, and Carl was on my neck at seven saying, Ken, you have to send a presentation. But I picked up something. I picked up something from Nawaz when they did the VMI presentation. And there was a point in time when they're talking about the three stages of your role you know, within the business as IT. At the first stage is uh, you're, you're primarily an infrastructure provider. And within this space, you're only looking at driving costs down. You're only looking at uh, standardizing. 
So your role within IT in driving the business strategy, because when you look at the business strategy, they always call out things more, because strategy is more long term, you know, how to achieve the objectives long term. It's usually one, uh, to uh, grow, you know, over a certain percentage. The second one is actually to keep costs down as well, keep costs down over a period of time. So if you're an infrastructure provider, the role that you play into that is a lot to do with driving costs down and standardizing. That is your primary focus, yeah? And there are a lot of things that you probably engage yourself with, cybersecurity, making sure that organization is safe. A ransomware attack can actually bring down your organization in terms of reputation, but also in terms of man hours lost, productivity lost, so it, it's a cost to the company. So you're in charge of making sure that cyber, you're very cyber secure. Uh, you put infrastructure in such a way that it can be scalable and agile, and you also drive automation. You, know? you drive automation within the business. So that is, that is how you fit into the company strategy, yeah? in your role, primarily as an infrastructure provider. Now, I remember Nawaz as well said that uh, a lot of organizations are actually on this stage, but they are progressing. And he's saying that make sure that you push yourself and you progress towards the end, towards the digital enterprise. But before that, if you're primarily uh, working as a business partner within the organization, then what you want to do as well is to partner with the business and accelerate the innovations. And you're looking at uh, improving on the business capabilities. If there is a process that is not working well within the business, you sit down and understand the gaps that are in there and try and plug those gaps. So you're improving the business capabilities, again, fitting into the strategy uh, of, of the company. But uh, process, a lot of process improvements as well, yeah? Because your aim is just to make sure that whatever the company is not doing well, you're a business partner. You understand how marketing works. You understand how finance works. You understand how operations works. Your mindset, because you've done your, your analysis, you've actually realized that uh, there is an issue within the ordering process. It's taking too long for you to get the orders out. So what do you do? You go in and you know, look at the gaps, you come in and maybe get a solution, then plug that in. That's your primary role. And that's where you're playing at. And you come up with new products, a lot of innovations, <clears throat> e-commerce, for example, and an online presence. Yeah? Because you're improving business capabilities. The business says, we only do physical deliveries. You know? we do not have an online presence. So what you do is you set up that online presence for the business, because that is your primary your role. Now, the third one that is actually very key, and that's where uh, everybody needs to move into, is now operating within the digital enterprise. The stark difference within this stage compared to the others is that IT and business converges. You speak as one. So you're no longer working in silos. You're not on that side, and we're on this side. You're actually operating together. And this is the ideal stage at which we all should actually move into, yeah? where IT and business converges. So that it, we don't talk about the role of IT in shaping business and, and innovation. We talk about the role of the business, because you're together as one. So the role of the business yeah, in shaping strategy and innovation. So there's a lot of collaboration here. There's a lot of collaboration. Compared to the first one, the first one, your main aim was to, my work is just to reduce on the costs you know, to, to the business. Here, primarily, what you're looking at is actually to grow revenue. That is the primary focus. How can we grow revenue? So you're discussing. And the, the supporting, uh, the underlying support around that is one, data-driven decision-making, because you're mature. It's a digital enterprise. So you look into your data. What does the data say? Data-driven decision-making. There is a new product I want to introduce. Yeah? There's a new product I want to introduce. It, I do not know how to price point it. Or how to, I don't know what, what price to introduce it at. However, the market fundamentals, one, there's competition growing. The economy is reducing. Yeah? The, the growth rate is going down. Uh, the population of adult drinkers is this. Uh, the, the consumer index is this. So you give it a lot of data, and what it tells you is that you can introduce this new product 
at this price point. That's data-driven decision-making that helps grow revenue. Mm -hmm. Then, of course, digital transformation. At this stage now is when you're actually moving the business from working into silos, from doing manual stuff, into actually proper digital transformation. So it's not just automating things. It's also things like culture, behavior that is coming up. Yeah? Then also, consumer personalization journeys. If you look at the previous one, I talked about you, you introduced a new product, e-commerce and online presence. But that's not enough. Yeah? That's not enough. If you want to grow revenue, then for that particular example, is a bit of personalization that comes in. Yeah? If you look at, for example, the banks, you have a relationship manager. A relationship manager even knows when your birthday is. They'll probably even wish you, say, happy birthday. It's not even just a bank. They'll probably just call you and say, happy birthday. It's that personalization. They want to grow revenue with you. They come up and say, these are the products. This is your salary range. Uh, these are your expenses. I can grow with you. Yeah? I can grow with you. That's the personalization. Hmm? So, the same, the same, in the same case, if you look at, for example, the online presence, personalization means that I know, for example, that you drink a you drink of Johnny Walker Blue. How many of you love Johnny Walker Blue? <laughs> You're, I know, for example, that you love Johnny Walker Blue. There's an event that's happening, jazz at Kempinski. I'll reach out to you and say, Oh, because you're a Johnny Walker Blue lover, and I've seen that you've actually ordered that several times within the bar, the bar platform, I'm inviting you on this day, Wednesday, 7 o'clock, to enjoy a night of jazz without any cost, just for you. Personalization. So that is the level that you start operating at, you know? Because then if you have that personal touch, then you grow. You grow the business, you grow the margins, you grow your revenue. So that is the stage that we all sort of need to move into yeah, at some point in time. We usually start off at the infrastructure level. That is what our thinking is. We get into the business partnering phase. And lastly, when you're operating within digital enterprise space is when now we're thinking about growing revenue and growing revenue together. So longer just IT. And all these things that I've listed are helping shape the strategy of the business. Yeah? So I try to break it down uh, in a very different way. This is my last IT slide. So now I'm going to put on my marketing hat and uh, take you through. Uh, but if there are any questions, I can deal with them later. Yeah. So, oh, sorry. This is, uh, this is the last slide for IT. Now, I think it was Peter. There was a gentleman called Peter uh, from Signal Alliance. I don't know if he's in here. And uh, when I told him that I'm going to present this, and he's like, Ken, I think it's just a framework. Just, I think it was 3 a.m. on Tuesday night. And he's like, Ken, just come up with a framework. Now, this is what I usually go through uh, when I'm trying to um, create a link, whatever IT is doing to our strategies. This is sort of the framework that I actually go through. One is uh, looking at external environment trends. <clears throat> external environment trends. Like I said, you come into CIO conference to learn more so that you can implement. You go in the market, in the field, you get to understand what's happening within the business. You visit Safaricom, the Decode Innovation Workshop, you get to understand what's happening. Yeah? You read newsletters, you need trends, people talking about AI, you get to know a lot more. So you analyze what's happening externally. Yeah? Then you need to come back internally because there's an internal strategy as well. You know, the business has said we want to grow by 10% over the next three years. We want to reduce our costs. We want to enable that using digital. So you also have to understand where is the business going? Where are the, where are the, the main areas that business wants to actually uh, look at? Then you do an internal assessment. You're not just going to execute your strategy without understanding internally where your gaps are. So you have to do an internal assessment. Yeah? And it, it's recently went through something similar within the IGO, within EABL. Because we know how to, we actually mapped everything. Uh, we usually call it grain to glass, grain to glass. So you plant the sorghum. From the time you plant that sorghum, you have a seed and you plant sorghum, all the way to the consumer picking up that glass and actually drinking it. <clears throat> In between, there are all defined processes. How to sell, how to, how to make beer, how to transport that beer, how to sell that beer, 
how to market that beer. And all that is supported by underlying processes within HR, within finance, within IT. So all those, you know, they are actually processes, but you need to actually understand where are the gaps in those processes. So you have to do an internal assessment. Then you prioritize. Again, the company will tell you that, yes, you've seen how immature we are in all these processes, but we're going to focus on maybe three areas. So you have to prioritize, and that goes together with resourcing. Then you, now you resource, resource for that. Then you get into your strategy execution. Here I've put project implementation. Then you get into your strategy execution by implementing different projects. Yeah? Very importantly, you have to measure and evaluate. And at this stage is where we talk about value realization. Yeah? Value realization. There is no way you can implement something and then you don't measure it because then you lose it. You lose it. You lose the momentum. So you have to measure and evaluate. And the last bit is about continuous improvement. You know, it's, not, it's not that you've implemented something. You've implemented your e-commerce and online, and you have an online presence. And then all of a sudden, now you stop. No. Continuous improvement. The next stage is personalization. So you improve upon that. So you have to continuously improve. So this is a framework that I actually use when I'm implementing. Yeah? So yes, now marketing. There's a program known as Fusion. Uh, DIJ is, uh, is rolling that out. Uh, and it's all about, uh, so DIJ is looking for partners uh, to co-innovate in several different spaces. Yeah? And uh, I'll just talk about that. That is the, the website. If you want, you can just write it down. If, you're, if, you, if you have a, a curious mind and there's a bit of creativity you know, within you, you can actually write it down. Uh, www.fusionpartnershiplab.com And I'll just go quickly into the details. So it's, what DIJ is requesting for is a partnership because DIJ wants to expand to new ch customers, channels, and categories and to learn from best in class and business builders. Yeah. So it's taking long. Okay. Okay, so this was, the, this was the first one. And the first one, and it's expiring today, but it's no problem. I'm just gonna speak into it. So the first, the first, the first one was celebrating at home. So we do have uh, the bar, that's an online pr platform. And consumers at home order through that platform. You drink, you create a moment to drink at home. I think the question is that how can you innovate within that space? What additional thing can you create? Yeah. So, uh, and it's just an example. You can order your drink, and then you get into a VR experience. <laughs> or you get into a VR experience with somebody in the US, you know, as you're enjoying your cocktail, and you have several discussions. So it's just one way of looking at it. So yes, so because I said the bar is our online uh, platform, so we're elevating that and coming up with different experience, a different experience. So the areas of interest, how can you make the home a place where consumers can discover just what they want in a setting which feels adjusted just for them? So potential areas, AI-powered recommendations. So you go to the bar, and because you've been there for a period of time, and you order gin, and you love gin, it actually tells you that you can pair your gin with this. You know, maybe ginger, and then add this and this and that. So that kind of, that kind of thinking. Yeah? Gifting, how do we enable gifting, for example, within the bar? Yeah? And then smart homes as well. Then the other area is connection. The home is central stage in our consumers' lives, a place to work, work out, wind down, welcome guests. How can you leverage technology to shape how our consumers connect and socialize in the home, both in person and virtually? So potential areas, gaming, e-learning, remote working tools, virtual events, hosting services. That's connection. Convenience. Life isn't getting any longer. What are new and exciting ways to ensure our consumers can easily enjoy the things they want, when they want, from the comfort of their homes? So potential areas, delivery solutions, <clears throat> last mile delivery, <clears throat> subscriptions, at home kits, and the rest. Yeah? So these are the areas that uh, we're trying to look at. Uh, this is just celebrating at home. There will also be other, there are three stages, this celebrating at home. There will be another scenario that will be, that will be sent out. So it's just around innovating within this area. 
So we're talking about how curious you are. Yeah? If you're a person who sees nothing in that blank space, how then should you shift your mind into looking at something, you know, and looking at bringing out something from that nothing? Yeah? So that is, uh, that's what's been looked at. I'm not going to play this because of uh, time, but like I said, the email address, I mean, the, the, the website is fusionpartnershiplab.com. The contact, this is the marketing, the biz, marketing Africa Digital Hub a marketing role, is Waithera Kabiru. You may have heard of her. That's her number, and that's her email address. Yeah? So she requested that I send this. If you're interested in that space, you can actually contact her. If you have ideas uh, that you have in your mind that you want to explore, you want us to explore with you, then, uh, this is then this is the area that you can come. These are persons you can contact. Yeah? I've run out of time, but thank you very much. Thank you very much, and uh, looking forward to interacting later on. Thank you. Thank you.